The stories of fear and survival. I'm surprised that uh, I, I would assume where I will. I, I would assume that Fox News would cover this and be like, wow. This is fucked up. I mean, uh, this judge is doing CRT. You know? There you go. Another another fucking, another judge doing critical race theory here, talking about how America's, like, foundational principles revolve around justifying and upholding white supremacist values, you know? Woke-ass judge, dude. Off topic, but this guy looks like an evil American brother of yours. <sighs> Where do you find this guy? I don't see it. Okay. Victim's name is MSU Morris in the wake of the mass shooting. Another I'm mass out shooting. Of Michigan State in the aftermath of Monday's mass shooting there. And we know the names of the victims, the students killed. Ariel Anderson was a junior. Brian Frazier, a sophomore. And Alexandria Verner, also a junior. Five other students were hurt. And we also know who police say the gunman was. Anthony Dwayne McCray. Officials say he took his own life. Of course, for many students, staff, and faculty, this was a terrifying ordeal. And, of course, the kind that is all too common for many Americans. Roxana Saberi has been gathering those stories of fear and survival in East Lansing for us. Uh, Roxana, good morning. Good morning. Here at the MSU Spartan statue, a tribute to the victims is growing. Classes here have been postponed until Monday. Students are sharing stories of survival as we're hearing new details about the gunman. Our Spartan community is reeling today. At an emotional press conference Tuesday, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer mourned the victims of the deadly shooting at MSU. The school is also her alma mater. Another place that is supposed to be about community and togetherness. What will it take to achieve gun, uh, gun control or reform on this issue, as someone asked in the chat? Uh, nothing. It, it's just, this is out of the news cycle already. This is literally the last thing you will hear about this news cycle. It's done. In another country, something like this happens, and it's like they're talking about it for months. They're like, how do we, how do we change things? We need to change things immediately. Other countries have a lot of faults and a lot of failures, but at least like they still fake it like they do care about their citizens and will often, like, will often take action. In the United States of America, it happens like twice a day. Shattered by bullets and bloodshed. Oh my God. Just after. Dude, not true when someone storms in the Congress and murders Republicans or when somebody shoots up the NRA, they will magically care. Interesting that you say that because that's, this has happened. Uh, Steve Scalise got shot in the ass and like may or may not have to use a colostomy bag for the rest of his fucking life. And he's still a major NRA advocate, so I'm pretty sure you're wrong about that. Uh, it happened at a congressional baseball game, and motherfuckers still don't care. So, no, you're not right. After 8.15 p.m. Monday, an emergency alert instructed students to run, hide, or, if there was no other option, fight. We had went to the bathroom, and like we barricaded the door with a couch, and we just turned all the lights off. That harrowing account was similarly shared by many as law enforcement swarmed MSU's campus. Police say a more than three hour search for the shooter ensued before he fatally shot himself at an off campus location. This will always be in the back of my mind. 19 year old freshman Ryan Cullihan told us he called his family as he hid in the library with his girlfriend. Did you ever think this could be the last time I'm speaking to my family? It crossed my mind, yeah, um, multiple times. The students killed in the shooting are Ariel Anderson, who wanted to be a pediatrician, Brian Frazier, the president of his fraternity, and Alexandria Verner, an all-state athlete. Iconic human being. Billy Schellenbarger is the superintendent of Clawson Public Schools, where Verner was previously a high school student. You think Republicans on the right in general are going to use the shooter being black as propaganda? No. I haven't really seen much of that, and you want to know why? Because mass shootings conducted by a white person, conducted by a black person, doesn't really matter. They, they have one component, 
that always links all of the mass shootings. And that's just like a gun, right? It's still factored under gun violence. And I feel like Republicans aren't even paying attention to this or talking about it because they're like, they just don't want to even talk about gun violence and mass shootings uh, all that much because they know they won. They know they won that conversation. There's no reason to, to bring that up. Also, black people uh, buy guns too. The NRA after Philando Castile, uh, after their silence in the aftermath of the Philando Castile uh, assassination by the police, uh, realized that like uh, w- they could be marketing to a black audience as well. And there's plenty of black people that buy guns too. And uh, so they don't do like as much racial agitated propaganda as they once used to. They immediately went and like hired Kalyan Noor. You know what I mean? Like they, they did all that shit. Her heart was huge. Her, her kindness and, and um, compassion were second to none. Five additional victims are in critical condition and receiving care at E.W. Sparrow Hospital in Lansing. Chief Medical Officer Denny Martin broke down as he described the effort to treat them. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night, sir. According to law enforcement, the gunman had no ties to MSU, but he did have a criminal record and was sentenced to a year of probation in 2019 for illegally carrying a concealed weapon without a proper permit. He's always popping off some rounds. Neighbors say they regularly heard him firing a weapon in the backyard of the Lansing home where he lived with his parents. We've heard the shots and stuff and we'd be like. If the kid of a high ranking Republican passed away in a school shooting, things would change. Nope. If the kid of a high-ranking Republican's son or daughter died, okay, in a mass shooting, and that Republican individually turned around and advocated for gun control, he would not get reelected. Okay, he just wouldn't get reelected. He would never, he would never sit in office ever again. Um, and even then, I don't even think that a person whose child died in a school shooting, especially if they're a Republican, would advocate for gun control. I'll just let you know real quick. I do not think that a Republican would advocate for gun control if their child was murdered in a school shooting. The heck? Here at MSU, a vigil will be held tonight for the victims. Some students here have survived other school shootings, including one in Oxford, Michigan, not far from here, just 15 months ago, when four students were killed. Yeah, there's like a, there's a Parkland shooter dad who thinks the Parkland shooting was a fucking false flag. Like, I don't think you guys understand how much gun ownership is like permanently a core identity for Americans and how that became a permanent fixture as a consequence of gun manufacturing being a very important industry in the United States of America, okay? There is a material uh, reason for this, and that is that guns, especially guns that we make for warfare, that then, uh, you know, different versions of that then get sold to the fucking uh, civilian population. There's a lot of them out there. You make a lot of money that way. You make a lot of money with like all the tools and bells and whistles that you put on those guns too. It's a massive industry. He wasn't a victim's dad. He was the dad of a student that was there though. I mean, yeah, but your child was there and and survived. The fuck do you mean? And you still think it's a false flag. killed and we hear there was a survivor from sandy hook there trying to make sense of the senseless yet again thank you roxana now to the aftermath of that train derailment in ohio where local residents are very reluctant to accept official advice that it's safe to return home i wonder why um i've seen so many people be like dude it's not that big of a deal including even like alan fisher who i love uh i think he 